I am a professor emeritus of McGill University, where I worked from 1961 until I retired in 1992. However, I have not been doing nothing since that time. Um, I continue contact with the University of the West Indies, where I frequently visit. And I am, have also in the last number of years been concerned with the literary legacy of my father, Karl Polanyi, which I have donated to Concordia University in Montreal, but I have maintained the rights of publication and I have been concerned with all oh, many translations and many requests relating to my father's work. I was born in Vienna, 1923. It was incidentally a year of the great inflation. My grandmother told me that the year I was born, they would take money in, in, in carts to the grocery and they would just weigh the amount of it. They didn't count anything anymore, so the inflation year. Um, I grew up as a child. I had a very happy childhood. Uh, we lived in, a, in the second district in Vienna in a beautiful home, looking out at the uh, Reserve Garden, that is uh, the inner nursery for the whole of the city of Vienna, so it was green everywhere. And I had a very happy childhood, and I am told that I really introduced my parents um, to some of the features of Socialist Vienna and of the kind of... Um, cultural organizations, in this case, having to do with children, children's camps and uh, uh, facilities in the area where I would go after school uh, to do all sorts of um, handicrafts and things like this. Right. Um, my parents both came to admire very much that the, the socialist administration, generally referred to as Red Vienna best known for the remarkable social housing. And uh, uh, you say, yes, it did. It was a very important to, my, to the rest of my life, mm -hmm. particularly the last days of Red Vienna and in the short civil war, which finished it in 1934, mm -hmm. of which I remember very vividly um, because my mother um, put me in charge of the house, in charge of the grandmother, in charge of everything, gave me for the first time some paper money uh, to go. And I went downstairs and bought a lot of potatoes and bread and made, felt very important indeed. For about three days, the electricity was off. There was a general strike affecting the electricity. And when it came back on on the Thursday of a week that had started on Monday, my grandmother was immensely pleased. But I knew that was bad news. Our side had lost. And it was, in effect, a defeat, the defeat of the trade unions and the socialist administration of Vienna. When I returned to school the following Monday, and found that many teachers were missing. I was told they had been arrested, uh, including the head of the school. And this made a very deep impression on me, I kind of think. I like to say it was a formative event of my life because I knew which side I was on. I was sent to England in 1934. Uh, my father was already in England. He. Uh, as you, you may know, was employed uh, by uh, a, an important economic financial weekly known as the Österreichische Volkswirt. It was the Austrian economist. And uh, he had been informed by his uh, colleagues that his best option might be to go to England, where he had many good contacts. The paper was in financial difficulties, all having to do with the accession of Hitler to office in Germany. And um, my mother stayed for two more years in Vienna because she was working for the um, militia 
of the Austrian Social Democratic Party called the Schutzbund. And they then were illegal, and, uh, and, I, and I was sent to, to England. I stayed with good family friends that we have known since Vienna days. I was sad to leave, very sad to leave. But, um, and I must say, my first encounters with England were not favorable. I thought it was a horrible place. <laughs> it's a lot of chimney pots that come as the train came then through the suburbs of South London. And it, all you could see is chimney pots and nothing green. And oh my gosh, what an awful place. But I got to like it later. I was very fortunate in England to receive a free place in an avant-garde, prestigious co-educational boarding school. That was one of the very few, name of Bidales. It's mm -hmm. well known in Britain. And I did re was receive a first-class education. My ambition was to study physics. I wa that's what I wanted to do. And I... Um, Managed. I, I got accepted to Cambridge to the science physics tripos, but there was no scholarship, so uh, that didn't work out. I think I tried the same thing again. My other favorite subject was history, mm -hmm. and I tried in Oxford, and I got accepted, but again, no scholarship. I decided I was a total academic failure, and I would just settle for the London School of Economics. <laughs> And that is how I, I, economics was never my first choice. And so I went to LSC, it was during the war now, 1941. The school was evacuated to Cambridge. So we had the benefit of being able to attend Cambridge lectures as well as our own. There came a, a time when I was, was called up for national service. Of course, I wanted like, like all the rest of of the girls that were there to, to work for one of the Rennes, the Navy or the Air Force or the Army uh, units for women, but that, that was all closed. So I, uh, they said, well, get to find yourself a job and that'll be your national service. And I found myself um, positioned in labor research for the Amalgamated Engineering Union, the largest union at that time in the country, basically doing making more material. Uh, and then um, I finished at LSE after the war. 